Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I came into a pretty crazy little thing right here. Of course, my giant Goliath bird-eating tarantula molted, and that is just such a wild experience. You guys may remember a week or two ago, we fed all of the tarantulas, and she didn't eat, and Bruce actually even had mentioned that a lot of times they don't eat before they molt, and maybe she didn't eat because she was gonna molt, and sure enough, she actually molted. This is so absolutely freaky. Now, we didn't catch the molt this time, but the last time she molted, I actually filmed the entire thing, and I figured I could use that to kind of explain what was going on. Now, what's really freaky when a tarantula is molting is that they'll actually flip on their back and oftentimes to a new tarantula owner they'll actually see their tarantula upside down and think oh my god are they dead now it's really important at this point if you keep a tarantula do not try to flip it right side up do not try to touch it because actually they're in their most vulnerable spot right now the actual molting process for a tarantula is one of the most dangerous things that a tarantula can actually do because during that time they're extremely vulnerable not only to predation but also if they're moved around the wrong way they can can actually die so just leave it alone and the actual experience is crazy just like this footage here that we see the last time she molted the whole process can take maybe 15 minutes or up to several hours as a matter of fact the last time she molted it took me almost 12 hours to film the entire process she struggled so hard to get out of that skin and again that ectoskeleton is basically a little duplicate of the animal just like a shed basically what happens is that as a tarantula grows it can only stretch so far and then it needs to actually shed that exoskeleton out and have a fresh layer of skin it is unbelievable it is so creepy to see it it's like an alien coming out of its shell unbelievably crazy oftentimes the signs you'll see before a tarantula is going to shed is that they'll get a bald spot on the rump and sometimes they can actually even leak a little bit of fluid from their joints now not all tarantulas do that but sometimes they will so if you ever see those types of things don't worry about the animal not being being healthy just means that it's getting ready for a molt and again during that process it's definitely the most sketchy time for any tarantula for sure because while they're vulnerable like that anything can possibly happen but even once they break out and they slowly climb out like you can see here which is totally creepy it's definitely kind of the things of nightmare but at the same time extremely interesting as well but once they finally climb out they're gonna do that flip over that last flip and that's basically the brand new tarantula now at that point they are unbelievably delicate and you do not want to touch them you do not want to handle them you do not want to do anything to them as a matter of fact for three to five days you don't even want to try to offer food because that skin is still healing and hardening up and if you even throw a cricket in there that cricket could literally kill the tarantula so you've got to be really careful during this period of time also giving it at least a week or two before you're going to actually think about handling an animal and as you can see i'm going to take out this little skin right here on Unbelievably crazy and you can see how she's a different color back there now I'm not gonna mess with her obviously because she's in that vulnerable stage right now but uh, it's a much darker looking color beautiful looking animal now it's gonna change a little bit as it darkens and kind of hardens up but it is a fresh brand new spider and take a look at this right here guys this is it looks like another spider it's so absolutely creepy you can see even the back right here so let's go ahead and take a closer look at how crazy this exoskeleton actually is so again it looks like it's a little spider and one of the things that's really crazy about the molting process with spiders is sometimes they can lose some of their limbs whether it's their legs or their pedipalps and during the molting process after they're done molting they'll actually gain back that leg oftentimes the leg is a little shorter and isn't quite as usable but uh, after another shed it becomes another leg totally wild so as they're growing missing that leg on the inside of the exoskeleton there's actually another leg that is growing they shed out and now it's usable but you can see all those urticating hairs right here on this just like you would see here obviously this is the abdomen area so wild and take a look at this guys right here the actual fangs oh my gosh these are the fangs of the goliath bird eating tarantula obviously these fangs are no joke i mean Gosh, could you imagine getting bitten by something like that? Absolutely crazy. And of course, we always seem to use these as pranks because of course, when someone sees this, they're gonna think that they're an actual tarantula. But today, we're not gonna do any pranks with it, at least not yet. Maybe Noah will later on his channel, I don't know. But there it is, guys. I mean, this is the end process of the growth of the Goliath birding tarantula. I'm so happy that it's okay because again, it's a very vulnerable and dangerous time for a tarantula. So, wow, what a way to start the day. Pretty exciting to be, you know, good three 
three weeks into breeding season right now and today was our biggest copulation of the year more males were hooked up with females than any other day we had about 15 or 16 locks today some really good ones still have a few males that are a little bit small that just don't seem to be getting the trick of it uh, pretty soon we'll have to make a decision if we're going to switch those males out definitely going to get an ultrasound with all these females sometime this week that way we get a baseline that way i can actually look at follicle growth i can look at how they're feeding and how they're actually breeding and i can start to make really good decisions this is where the art becomes a little bit of a science and the science becomes a little bit of the art but uh we're moving along pretty well and hopefully within the next month or two we'll see some advanced follicle growth down here in the brumation room we're just going to go through today and check some of the snakes out check on their water check on the actual snake make sure it's not losing weight which it shouldn't because down here we're at about mid 50s 55 to 58 degrees you know they're obviously staying nice and cool get them ready for breeding i have some of the late brumaters next door we're going to get those guys set up bring them down here i think they'll have about uh three weeks to a month to cool off so let me check up on these guys i'm going to check their water check make sure they're still looking good and healthy and uh, then i'll take you over and we'll see the whole process of bringing the uh, new ones down see in this enclosure right here uh exactly absolutely nothing the deal is we're gonna do a little revamp on this cage right now this is actually an abronia lythrochyla i believe that's how it's pronounced but it always hides and no one ever sees it and no one ever wants to take it out so we're gonna actually take this off exhibit right now we're gonna actually put the translucent female chameleon in here on display and we'll eventually get this back on when we do our expansion and so like that but the first things first is to actually find this little monkey here usually it's hiding back here uh yep it's right here in the corner so i'll just kind of slowly get this little guy out and don't get me wrong i love abronia i think they're absolutely amazing the one problem is is that again hides all the time and it is a biter as well so it likes to bite so it's not really a good animal for people to take out and handle typically as a matter of fact it's rare for me to take it out as long as i have right now and not get bitten cool animal love all of the abronia stuff so we're just going to go ahead and set this little guy up at bhv just for another month or two and then we'll put him into another enclosure in the expansion but in the meantime we'll get this cage all revamped reset up and uh, ready for the female veil chameleon Andrea has the whole cage disinfected and redone up, nice branches, different sized branches and vines and stuff like that for her to climb on, some foliage. Uh, not to mention, they actually like to eat these types of plants. So whenever you put a veil chameleon in a cage, you wanna make sure that you're using plants that are not toxic whatsoever, because you can see she'll nibble on all of these plants. This is the plant that was in her enclosure before. When we first got her, we thought that, that she was actually egg bound and we were really concerned about it. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Maybe they were feeding her like hornworms and stuff that made her really fat. Slimmed down a bunch, not egg bound. So we'll just go ahead, put her in her new environment over here at the Reptarium. And uh, pretty much the same type of enclosure she had next door. So it's not a really big change. Shouldn't be much of a stretch. We use a lot of the same type of vines and branches and stuff like that that she had over there. Same plant over there. That way she kind of adjusts really well. So I think she's going to be a really great addition because that translucent with that pied look to them. It's a recessive mutation. is really cool. I think people are going to love her. And although I love the Abronia personally, the fact that you really never saw it didn't really work out here. So uh, there it is, the new addition to the Reptarium. Dude, but uh, it could definitely be creepy because, I mean, you go down there, you'd have to find the right night where it's a little windy, it's a little maybe precipitation. Okay. He's using big words today. I'm liking it. Windy and precipitation. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard him say something with seven letters in it. That's crazy. <laughs> I just heard it on the TV. All right, guys, so down here, you see this beautiful Everglades rat snake we've got here. Usually this thing would be biting the crap out of me, running around, trying to get away. You can tell they definitely slow down here in the wintertime. So they almost, 
shut down. It's like, uh, I want to say like putting your computer on sleep mode or something. It's still on, but it slows down a lot more, shuts a lot of the stuff down. Their metabolism almost completely stops with the cool. And uh, it's just like we're mimicking what they would do in the wild. As you can tell, we got our brand new cup rings or sterilized cup rings, sterilized tubs, brand new bedding. So when you go to put these guys down in the cooler temperatures, not only does their metabolism slow down, but so does their immune system. So they're a little more susceptible to sickness. So what we want to do is make sure they have a hundred percent sterile environment. They're nice and safe. So what I'll do is I'll wrap up the rest of these cages here, get them swapped over and get them downstairs in a brumation. You have to help. No. Yeah. No, but that's what just, it's just for the camera. Just smoke and mirrors around here. I actually have robots. It's supposed to be done on Friday, me. dude. No, but listen, I had to help Mary. You know, Mary. God bless her. I had to help her a little. Lazy. Didn't have time. Yeah, she is. So, what we're going to have you do, we're going to carry minimum four at a time. If you don't carry four, listen, you can take two if you'd like. Okay, it's not a big deal. I didn't bring my knife today. You know what? I'll record you to the police. That's even. The pen is mightier than the sword, my friend. Am I right? I'm getting out of here. Okay, guys, that's it. We've got them all moved over. Thank you. No, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, it's a lot of trips by yourself. Guns. That's right. Dance. You're going to need tickets to that gun show. So, <laughs> so what I was going to say was they're all moved down here. Oh, they might man. be a little bit late, Look but they're gorgeous. still going to get time to cool off. They'll come back over with the other group. They'll start breeding and uh, another colubrid season's on its way. Like I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of breeding when it came to the pythons earlier today. So I wanna teach Mary how to ultrasound because it's gonna be important for us to ultrasound all these animals and we'll do it together. But when she's actually spot ultrasounding, it's a good kind of tool for the breeding, right? So if a particular animal is getting bred and you're like, I wonder how she's doing, is she advancing? I want her to be able to just do one animal at a time. When we do all of them, we'll probably do it together just cause it's a lot quicker, but I figure I'll teach Mary and you guys right along with me how to actually ultrasound animals. So uh, obviously we just have a CTS 3300 Sui. You can get all kinds of different ultrasounds. And let me just tell you for sure, you don't need an ultrasound to breed snakes. It's just a tool that helps you, right? So you're not gonna produce any more clutches from having an ultrasound, but just kind of knowing when to breed an animal, when to stop breeding an animal and all that type of stuff, it does help quite a bit. It takes a lot of the work and the guessing out of it, right? So the first thing is you just wanna use conductive gel right so basically you just put a nice conductive gel on this and I'm going to show you Mary and you guys as well and then I'm going to have you do it as well so that you get a feel for it the first thing you want to do is you always want to know that you want about about 60% down the body is where you're gonna start, right in this area here, right in the side, above the belly scutes, right on the side here, and we're gonna take this probe, and you have to push it in pretty decent. You know, not just really soft, you have to really do it, and then you start to see the actual stuff on the screen, right? And what we're basically doing is you're just going up and down until you find the gallbladder which is in here somewhere. And again, it can kind of move around quite a bit. In this case, I actually found the follicles before I found the gallbladder. You can see those round spots right there. And you can see how kind of, I'm, I'm definitely pressing hard. I'm not hurting the animal, but I'm pressing hard. And I'm going up and down like this to kind of get that sonogram going. And so ultimately, once I get the follicles right here, I just basically measure the follicles. I take my cursor, I hit enter there. I can go across to this side and I have an idea. It says it's 11 millimeter follicles, right? So ultimately, when you can find that gall bladder, that big black gallbladder, it's a little easier because you can follow them down to the follicles. And sometimes you just find the follicles first, which is completely fine too, because ultimately that's obviously what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead, get this back gelled up, and I'm going to let you take over, Mary, all right? All right. So here you go. And again, just kind of hold that animal right like that, and then push right about there. And you can push pretty hard. You can push a little harder. Yep, just keep on going down, keep going down. Push a little harder, keep the conductivity. And you actually, if you go back over here, you can see the gallbladder actually is right there. See, that's the gallbladder right there. So now follow that down here. Keeps keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. Yep, there's the follicles right there. See them? Oh, yeah, I do. And then just step on that thing. And there you go, there's your follicles. Okay, so cool. there you are, Mary, you figured out how to ultrasound. Oh, Yay! <laughs> and so that's really what it is. And as the follicles get bigger, obviously, 
it's a lot easier to find them because they're bigger follicles. It's sometimes it takes me 10 seconds to find a big follicle. So that's basically it. We'll go through, do an entire ultrasound here uh, later on this week so that every animal in it, we have an idea. This girl's at 11 millimeters, which is the starting off point. So uh, breeding season is well underway. Pretty wild about that tarantula, right? If you like this video, you can watch the tarantula molting right here in that video. Here's an entire playlist for you guys to roll through if you don't mind over here. Hit that subscribe button for me. Turn the post notification on. Have an absolutely wonderful day and remember to be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.